Hello again, this is Thomas from Hotkey404 and from this series how to install 3CX on, you should already know how to do this on Raspberry Pi, on Linux, but we have the third on-premise installation that we handle today, Microsoft Windows. I don't want to repeat myself for the third time, but in case you don't know, 3CX it's not just another asterisk-based open source software. It's a professional telephone system that right now allows you to obtain a perpetual license completely for free. So as we have done with the Raspberry and Linux, uh, today we'll handle just the installation of the software. So grab your server and let's get to work. Just like we've done with the previous systems, we are going to start from scratch. So we are going to create a completely new Hyper-V machine. We are going to name it, like usual, Hotkey 404 3CX test. If this were, let's say, a Debian machine, 3CX requires first generation, but for Microsoft, we can go with the second one. Next, we will go with this round 1.5 gigabytes of RAM, select our network adapter, and for testing purposes, 50 gigabytes is really enough for the storage. After allocating resources, we will continue our configuration, so we will add additional CPU, and then we will add DVD, and I have downloaded this trial version from Microsoft, and I will change the boot order because I don't want to wait for my network to try to start the system. We want to start with drive, but since this is empty, it will automatically jump to DVD. With all of that, we can just connect to our machine and start it and then boot from our drive. From this uh, install menu, we, I will leave the default English language of our installer, but I will change time and uh, currency to my local one here in Poland. As you can see, setup is starting and we will select the second option, which adds a graphic interface. Next, after carefully reading the whole license, because everyone does that, we will continue with our setup uh, leave the default partitioning and click next. And this will take a few minutes and after that we will have our system ready. After around, let's say, 15 minutes uh, we will be able to log into our machine with the credentials that we have set up during the installation. And here we will start by configuring our network. So going to our network settings, I'm going to disable IP6 because we are not going to use this. And I'm going to change to static IP address. And since we are in settings menu, I will jump to updates and I strongly suggest doing so. You will do this eventually, so why not start by installing all of the updates. Depending on your machine, it may take a while. In my case, with the resources, that I have uh, given, it took exactly an hour. So once the updates are finished, we can continue our setup. And to continue, I will do something that will maybe look a bit strange. I'm going to shut down the computer. And I want to do that because uh, after we have this initial setup, we want to do some adjustments and verifications inside Hyper-V Manager. Since the machine is shut down, uh, we will go to advanced network settings and we will change uh, from dynamic to static MAC address because this could interfere this change of MAC address with our 3CX and since we don't need DVD anymore, we will just remove it. After starting the machine once again and logging into our system, we will do the only thing that I use Internet Explorer for, which is downloading Firefox. After all, Internet Explorer is officially unsupported web browser for 3CX, so you need to change this anyways. Uh, once you have your web browser, uh, we will go to 3CX. And of course, link is in the description. And here you need to type in your name and your email to obtain a trial license. 
And at this point, I just want to highlight that uh, you can obtain it completely for free and it will also give you an access to a customer panel and there you will find a link to download Microsoft 3CX system. For simplicity, I will just type it manually. With the download, we can finally start our 3CX installation. About 3CX installation, I'm not going to explain in details all the steps because it's pretty straightforward. Just agree to installing all prerequisites and just move on to the next and the next steps and then finally you'll be able to see this nice 3CX logo and you have two options. You can continue the configuration using web browser or the command line. I will of course use the first one. After a second, uh, this installer will automatically open the web browser with our installer. So we will start by typing our license key and yes, you can obtain it completely for free. So do not bother just trying to stop the video and copying mine because it simply won't work. If this is a new license, you will have an additional step where you will fill registration information. And if you're thinking about this uh, reseller ID, you can type mine right now or fill this later. Next, uh, we will set up our username and password, which is pretty straightforward. In the next step, we will verify if this is actually our public IP address. If you are uncertain, just Google it. Then select the type of your public IP address. In most cases, probably it will be static IP address, but if not, just select the second option. Now we will type in our FQDN and I will type hotkey 404 3CX test and select my region just for simplicity. In the next step, uh, we will see all those possibilities for ports that will be used to create tunnels, to configure SIP services, I will leave them at their defaults. And then after selecting our network card and 3CX suggests just to use one of those, we can click next and this will in a few minutes create all necessary certificates. After we have that, uh, we are, I think, at the most important step of this configuration, extension length. You cannot change this later. So if you have really small office with, let's say, 10 extensions, just stick to the first one. But if you have 500 and you plan on expanding twice the size, just go with four digits because you cannot change this later. I will stick with the default three digits. In the next step, we will type our admin email for notifications, select uh, country and time zone, and this will also be helpful for dialing rules. Next, uh, we will create our operator extension. So this will be the default extension for incoming calls and the first extension that you can actually register. And on your email, you will receive a password for it. I will just change voicemail extension because 999 is an emergency here, so change this to something else. Then uh, select uh, regions or countries that can be your outgoing destinations. I will just select United Kingdom. If you want, you can select, for example, whole Africa. But of course, I do not need this right now. And the final step here is uh, language of your prompts. Since most of my customers uh, use Polish language, I will select that. And now this starts process of creating your PBX. So just grab your coffee and wait a few minutes until this finishes. At the very end, if you have your ports forwarded, you will be able to use one of the links provided if not, just replace your public IP address with a local one and you'll be able to log into this uh, web panel. And here it is. You have your 3CX ready. And now, uh, let's say a bonus. Since we want to be really thorough, we will check one more detail. 3CX suggests uh, that you change your time provider. 
I personally don't mind using NTP time, but if you want to do exactly what 3CX suggests, you can go to this regex and go to computer, uh, local machine, system, current control set, services, W30 to time and time providers. And inside a VMIC time provider, you will see that it is enabled and you want to have that. But uh, if by default you are using NTP, you can jump to NTP client, uh, change enable to zero, and then going back to our command line, uh, we can go w 32 tm config update, then once again w 32 tm resync rediscover, and after those two commands, if you do w 32 tm query source, you will see this expected VMIC time provider. And the second option uh, that we need to verify is that we are actually using a correct network adapter. So if you do ipconfig slash all, it is expected that you will see Hyper-V network adapter. And this is exactly what we have here. So uh, if you really need that, uh, just follow those two simple steps and your virtual machine with Hyper-V is exactly what 3CX expects of you. Okay, we've done it. I've showed you how to do an on-premise installation on all three operating systems. But this is just the installation. There is a configuration ahead of you, of firewall, of other necessary services. All of that will be handled in another videos. So, you know what to do. But for now, have an amazing day. Thank you again for watching and see you in the next one.